Hey guys, Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be adding a transmission cooler to a Jeep Cherokee. Let's get started. Before we really get tearing into this project, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do. This is a picture of the stock setup. We have our transmission. We have our transmission fluid hotline. It goes through the radiator and then back out the return line, back to the transmission. Now, this part in the radiator, it's just a little metal tube that connects the hotline to the return line. And what it does is it immerses the transmission fluid inside of the engine coolant. So if you start your Jeep on a cold day, you have to get both your transmission and your engine up to their operating temperature. Because your engine warms up a lot faster than your transmission, this little part right here helps your transmission warm up faster. You have the uh, hotter uh, engine coolant, which is going to help warm up the transmission fluid and get everything up to the operating temperature. Now, once we're there, though, we don't necessarily want our transmission to keep getting hotter and hotter. Uh, the, your engine operating temperature is higher than your transmission operating temperature. So once we get up to that operating temperature, this really isn't helping us anymore. So what we're going to do and where we're going to add the transmission cooler is on the return line. So we're going to cut our, our uh, return line and we're going to splice into it two more lines to connect in our transmission cooler. We're going to be mounting the transmission cooler behind the grill in front of the radiator. To get to that, we're going to have to remove the grill, and that's just done with a couple of Phillips head screws. Now that we've got the grill off the Jeep, the next thing to do is figure out which line is the feed line and which line is the return line on the transmission. There are two ways to do this. One way is to start the Jeep, put it in drive, and leave your foot on the brake for about a minute or so. Next, put it in park, turn the Jeep off, and feel the transmission lines and feel which one is hotter and which one is cooler. The cooler one is your return line. The other one is if you want to go all the way back to the transmission, the one that uh, enters the transmission farther in the rear is going to be your return line. Uh, the, those two lines are going to be on the passenger side of the transmission. We're under the Jeep now and I've located the two transmission lines. One of them is here and the other one is right here. Next thing to do, start the Jeep up and figure out which one is our return line. Now that I know that this is the return transmission line, I'm going to cut it and I have a, uh, a catch pan underneath because I'm not exactly sure how much uh, transmission fluid is going to come out. Let that all drain. Okay, it's not bad. Now that we've got everything on the Jeep ready to go, let's talk a little bit about the transmission cooler. Uh, I went out and got myself a, a Hayden Rapid Cool Trans Cooler. The specific model is 678. Uh, this one says it's rated for motorhomes and trucks towing up to 5,000 pounds, and it's a, a plate and fin style. Uh, you can really use any transmission cooler. There's nothing really special about these, this one. Um, as long as it fits behind your, uh, in front of your radiator, behind the grill, you're good to go. Uh, you can go and pick up a stock Cherokee with a uh, tow package. has these, so you can go to a junkyard and pick up one that came stock on a Cherokee if you'd like. Um, this is everything that came with it. You've got the transmission cooler, you've got some mounting hardware, and a little bit of a 3 8 line. Uh, now, since this is kind of a, a universal fit one, it's not necessarily designed for the Cherokee. It's got some parts that we're not going to use, like uh, this guy right here. This is if we were mounting it to a hard line. Um, you could do that, but I don't have any of the specific tools needed to do that, like a line flare or anything like that. So we're going to go to the soft line. Um, now, on the left here, this is the stuff that I had to go out and buy myself uh, to make this work. So. Again, it's not necessarily designed exactly for the Cherokee, so I had to buy a couple extra parts. Um, one of the parts I had to get, go out and get was this uh, barbed fitting. It's for a 3 8 soft line to a 3 8 soft line, and the stock Cherokee uh, transmission line is 3 8 in her diameter. So you're going to need two of those. I went out and got a couple of more uh, hose clamps, and then a little bit more hose. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually have to use this, um, but it's there just in case. Now that we've got our transmission line cut, next thing we're going to do is splice in some new hose so we can attach our transmission cooler. 
To do this, you're going to need your barbed fitting, and you're going to slip it over one side of the line. On top of that, we're going to put one of our hose clamps, or screw clamps, whatever you like to call it. We're going to put it on this side of the line. We're also going to take another one of those hose clamps, and we're going to put it on some of our new line. Once we've slipped our hose clamp on a new line, we're going to attach that to the other side of the barbed fitting, and we're going to tighten down the hose clamps so we don't get any leaks. Now that we've got this new hose attached, the next part is going to be to uh, run the new hose up to the front of the grill and attach it to our transmission cooler. I ran the line up to the front of the radiator, but before we attach it to the transmission cooler, I want to figure out where I'm going to put it. Uh, we have the mecha mechanical fan on this side and the electric fan on this side. I think I want to put it over here on the passenger side in front of the mechanical fan. And the reason why that is, is this one is always spinning. The electric fan doesn't kick on until the engine has reached its operating temperature. And like we talked about before, the transmission's operating temperature is lower than the engine one. So I want this to be cooling down before we reach the uh, point where the engine is warm. So I'm going to put this over here on this side. And when I cut this before I attach it, uh, you always want to cut a little bit long. You don't want to make any really tight bends with this hose. You can kink it. So make sure you run it. You don't get into, into anything sharp or anything moving. And uh, you want nice, gradual bends. Now it's time to attach the hose to the transmission cooler. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our hose clamp over the hose and then attach the hose to the transmission cooler over that fitting there. Then we're going to tighten down our hose clamp and move on to the return line. Now that we've got this all tightened up, we can start working on the return line. The return line is going to go pretty much the same way as the feed line. So this was our feed line. It's the line going into the transmission cooler. And then our return line is going from the transmission cooler back into the transmission. So just like the feed line, first thing we're going to do is going to put our barb fitting in. We're going to slip over our hose clamp, put our hose clamp over our new hose, and then put that hose on the barb fitting and tighten down our hose clamps. All right, now we can run a return line. Now that we've run our return line, we can measure it and cut it to length. Slip our hose clamp on it and attach it to the transmission cooler. With all the hoses hooked up, the next thing to do is to actually mount the transmission cooler. The way I'm going to do it is just with the provided hardware. We have a couple of these uh, little pads that just keep this from rattling up against here when you do mount it. And then it's, it has these plastic things. They kind of look like zip ties, but they're going to go through a uh, little mounting hole through here, through the radiator, and it attaches on the back with one of these plastic things. Think of it like a zip tie, where you can push it in one way, but you can't pull it out. And that's how we're going to mount it. Now on the back side, this is going to run into the fan, so I'm just going to have to clip these after I put the back on it. Now I'm going to attach the backs and clip off the excess. Now we've got this thing mounted, we've got it all plumbed and ready to go. Next thing to do is going to start it up, check for leaks, then we're going to have to add a little bit more transmission fluid. 
So I ran the Jeep with the new transmission cooler on it. It didn't have any leaks. So the next thing we're going to do is check the transmission fluid level. Now here, right here is your uh, transmission dipstick. And right on the dipstick, I'm sure you're not going to be able to see it, but uh, take my word for it. It says, check idling in neutral. So you don't want to check your uh, transmission fluid right now. Like right now, mine says it's at the max. But when I start this up and I leave it in neutral, this fluid level is going to drop a little bit. So you always want to check your transmission fluid while you're idling in neutral. Alright guys, we are almost done. The last thing we gotta do is put the grill back together. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. If you want to know how to adjust your Jeep's TV cable, go ahead and click over here. And if you want to know how to change your flasher relay, click over here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.